Uh, we're kind of coming down the final stretch of the season. We're seeing some pretty important, significant storylines developing. Uh, so I thought that we could take a second to talk about a few of the things that I'm sort of taking away now that all of week 14 has a, row, a bow and a uh, farewell postcard attached to it. And I want to start in the NFC with the Cowboys, because uh, what went on in that game against the Texans is important. It took everything Dallas had to come up with the 27 to 23 win, okay? And here's what you're looking at. This is a goal line stand like no other. This is something that gave the offense a pulse, a chance, some probability on an abacus. And listen, Dak and co responded. What did they do? They marched right downfield on a 98-yard game-winning drive. Both sides of the ball stepped up with the game on the line and both deserve a ton of credit for that. We're all like living in this Odell, Jerry Jones, cute Matt. We're not, we have to pay attention with the facts. What's reality, what's happening. And the fact is that they came down to a dramatic finish against uh, you know, a one-win team using two different quarterbacks and playing without their top two receivers. That is a bit concerning. There's like a little bit of a mm, and there's always a little bit of a oh boy when it comes to Mike McCarthy. McCarthy and he was asked about it after the game, here's what he said. You know, this this is football, and this is this. You know, I'm not trying to make excuses. I, I, you know, I get what's on my chest and the expectations. I, I get that, but it's about winning, and um, we got it done today. You got it done, and yeah, like you're not wrong. So I can't like, like poke holes in your logic. It's true. Uh, and in the process of picking up said win, became the first Cowboys coach since Barry Switzer back in '95 to lead Dallas to double-digit wins in back-to-back seasons. That's all cute. That's great. That's a nice little tweet that flew out. I actually don't even know why I'm saying that. But listen, it's none of that matters. Sunday's game is the perfect example of why everyone's hesitant to sort of wrap their arms. I certainly am. I'll be the first to say it. And if they do it, I'll be happy for them. Sure, I'm happy to see them go all the way in the NFC. But I can't get there yet. There's not enough proof. Would Odell tip the scale in their favor? It didn't, listen, when he went to the Rams and he was really great, I still didn't think the Rams were gonna win the Super Bowl. So I don't know, coming off an injury off that, that would swing the balance in their favor. There are major, trust issues and you can try to make it work and you can try to like see couples therapy and do all of that but if like these are foundational issues that have been extended my entire life period with this franchise and so many of you watching out there it's hard and that is the weight that is on the chest of Mike McCarthy whether you know he's on the sideline throwing a clipboard or whether he's showing up looking like Vince Lombardi and everybody's dragging him for it at Lambeau the more I watch this team and I watch both CD and Michael Gallup completely silent on Sunday. The more I watch, the more I'm convinced that they need to get OBJ if they're gonna contend. And yes, I know they signed my guy, T.Y. Hilton. I love him, a great veteran. Uh, and I do understand the outlined prominent concerns about Odell's health right now. Um, but let's say that it's true, right? And they say that he won't be ready until the playoffs. Okay, sometimes you just have to take a swing. Okay, Odell's proven time and time again, he's a bit of a difference maker and a different animal out there. Uh, and it's clear Dallas has not completely filled the void created by the Amari Cooper trade. Nobody wants to talk about that. So adding Odell makes sense. It's a swing. I don't know if it tips everything and I all of a sudden trust them and think they're taking out the Eagles or anything like that. But it gives you that much more belief in their ability to commit and to make a playoff run. Jerry, I love you. It's time. Do what you're born to do. Circumcise the mosquito and take this way. All right, now, next. Um, I want to hear from Steve Wilkes. The Panthers had a big win over Seattle. Take a listen. Everything that, you know, we've gone through, they've gone through with the different, you know, coaching changes, you know, getting rid of players or, or, the, or the organization trying to tank it, you know, all those different things. And to see how those guys respond and came out and played today, it is pretty uh, uh, thrilling and emotional, yes. It's also really fun. There's a lot to unpack here. And we start with the NFC South situation. Why is no one talking about the Panthers? Wilkes is their interim head coach. The Panthers somehow under his stewardship have climbed to within a game of the Bucks for the division lead. What? Like we have Mark Ingram, we're always talking about the Bucks. We're gonna talk about the Panthers and Mark Ingram. That's the team to be and they beat Pittsburgh this weekend. Then, you know, Tampa falls to the Bengals. This is what would happen. Carolina would move into shoop first place. What a climb for a team that fired its head coach 
early in the season, a team that's, you know, pretty much become the NFL's redemption island, let's be honest. First, you have Wilkes, who, in my opinion, everyone's opinion, it happened live on my show. We talked about it. Raw deal in his first NFL head, head, head coaching gig. Fired one and done season in Arizona back in 2018. Enter Wonder Kid Cliff Kingsbury. Let's talk about how that's going. Look to highlights to last night to tell you. Uh, a year ago, Wilkes was the defensive coordinator at Mizzou. I'm from Mizzou. Mizzou. Oh, I literally just cracked my back doing that. Anybody hear that? Oh, Conrad's saying I'm not getting out of push ups, but I just think I'm playing hurt today. Uh, it looked like Wilkes would not, you know, it's, it's, you get the coaching gig, the head, head guy in charge, and then once you lose it, I really, do, am I ever getting back? Am I ever getting close to being back? A lot of guys never sniff a head coaching gig again. I could point to all of them. But uh, now, Wilkes might be coaching his way into a full-time gig, whether it's in Carolina or some other team that's like, hey, they're climbing, they're playing well. They might be the lead in the division, a division that has Tom Brady. What? Uh, and then there's Sam Darnold. Sammy, following a preseason injury, Baker Mayfield experiment, P.J. Walker experience, he finally gets a chance to start again in week 12, and he's 2-0, okay? He's 2-0 as a starter, and you love to see it. Three touchdowns, by the way. How many interceptions? Oh, zero in those two starts? Amazing. How about the running back room? This team traded away their superstar on Christian McCaffrey. I literally just hurt my entire neck on that. Ow. I really did. Doing this? Aging is the dumbest. Anybody out there that cannot age, like, don't ever do It's the dumbest thing that's ever been. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, Christian McCaffrey, still young, oft injured. He's been amazing. Um, and we got to take a look at what these, these guys did in his stead instead, because take a look at this. Since the trade, Deontay Foreman, sleeper du jour on our show often, uh, he's fifth in the NFL in rushing, averaging over 85 yards a game on the ground, which is incredible for a guy who was thought to be toast after an Achilles injury back in 2019. And there's also the Ben McAdoo of it all, by the way. There's too much to unpack here. The former Giants coach finding a way to make this offense work. And I got to give credit to the defense. Oh, I'm, I am like the clickbait of young, feisty, Jeremy Chin, everybody. They look so great. And they're fine. The talent is there, but they're finally playing up to the super high ceiling of their talent and potential. So. If the Panthers can make this happen, they get to win, the Bucks lose, they switch a play. This would be probably one of the coolest underdog stories and one of the underdog stories that absolutely no one is talking about, and I don't know why. So that's what we do here on the Up and Adam show. I'm just going to, can I get some ice? Conrad, I don't want to do push-ups. Here's the problem with the push-ups. Can you voice of God me really quick? Conrad, can you be the voice of God or no? No. Uh, there's not enough of an incentive for me to do a push-up. If I, if you were to say, here's a million dollars, I could probably do five push-ups. But if it's just for the show, I could probably do one. Conrad? Marissa's saying two. I thought you had a voice of God thing back there. Is that broken? What do you do, what do, you do back there, Conrad? You know what? You get your mind right, Kay. Get Darius. your mind right. Stop making excuses over here. Get your mind right. Do it for the show. I came, I came in today. People. I came in today and they have a yoga mat here in front of me and I go, oh, yeah, <laughs> today I was out, I was out kind of late. I have a creak in my neck. You got a nice little, you like nice, what's that, a shacket? Yeah. Nice it's shirt, a shacket. jacket. It's is a shacket cute. that yeah, should have it. a shirt under it, but look at this. Look what they brought. Look what they brought over here. I like it. I like Did it. Did you do your ready. push ups? Sorry, Siri. Nobody's talking to you. Siri, no, no one is talking uh, to today you. Today was a leg day. No put, no push-ups today. Leg day. Got the legs in. Got in there early. Now got leg a little day. Nice. Leg day. Nice I can do. Nice walk in. Yeah. Oh, we got a mall hey, walk stop in. Front today. An 80s. Yeah, but you know what? You got to you got to stop complaining though. I heard a neck. I heard a shoulder. I heard a back in the last five minutes. Okay, well, so come on. I'm Get so thanks right. for thanks for popping Darius on, guys. That was lovely. I'll talk to you in a little bit, uh, <laughs> Butler. Oh, we have another thing to talk about: uh, the Titans, right? Feel good story yeah. uh, on the verge of turning into an absolute nightmare. Take a look at this. They get blown up by the Jags at home, right? The Titans have now lost three straight. Fire their GM. Their AFC South lead has dwindled down to a measly two games. Jacksonville gaining ground quickly while Tennessee, man, what's going on in Tennessee? They seem to be getting further and further away from the team that they were earlier in the year. And I do not know 
what the answer is. This seems obviously, listen, I'm very compassionate and empathetic about injuries as I'm dealing with one, and that's what they have there. Riddled with injuries, Rabel's done a really good job of getting them to this point despite all of that. Uh, but I'm starting to wonder if this year is kind of time to, what do they say, mail the car home? Like, ship the car home, start planning the vacation, because I don't know if it's happening. The Titans rank in the bottom 10 in total offense and total defense. And I'm really saying this because at this point, you know what teams are good, you know what defenses are tough, and the schedule doesn't get easier. Uh, the Chargers in LA, we're gonna be at that game! Our whole show's going to that game, woo! The Texans, the Cowboys, and then a week 18 meeting with the Jags that could end up being for the division title, which is woofferific. Um, things are at their bleakest right now, but if there's one coach that we hear about constantly, who I believe in and I have faith in, that's going to make it work, it is Mike Vrabel. And we've seen him navigate unique challenges every single year, and he's gotten, I mean, he could win a football game in Pandora of Avatar, guys, I'm telling you. He could, I saw Avatar last night. I think it's the 3D glasses threw off. I wouldn't wear the 3D glasses at this thing because my makeup was so pretty. And I don't think anybody considers when you have to put on glasses, like what that would do to your entire, what if I wanted to go to the after party? So there is that. So, and then they have these cap, and I like made a stand. I'm not wearing the 3D glasses. And then of course there's captions, subtitles, and you can't read them without, it's like such an incredible, beautiful experience. Everyone should go, but you can't read it. So then you're like trying to see what it says. So you can understand since I don't speak. Pandoran, but lovely movie, and everyone should see it. All right, we gotta go. Um, Rabel, what are you gonna do with Tennessee? Let's go. Buckle up. Push ups next. <laughs>